Hi everyone, I'm Tom and this is my Essenspiel preview for 2018. I'm doing things a little bit differently this year to try and speed things up because maybe you've noticed if you've been being constantly harassed by notifications from my channel about new videos, but yeah, there's a lot more to do this year and so it needs to keep coming, but I still wanted to do the preview list, but I'm going to try and be a bit snappier than perhaps I have been in the past. So. I am here on the Tabletop Together tool, which I absolutely recommend. There is the Board Game Geek tool as well, which can give you some once list and things, but I really like the extra things that the Tabletop Together tool has got. Tabletoptogether.com slash tool. There is a top 10 list you can go and see instead. I'm trying to do this, you know, just in one big go, and I'm experimenting with a microphone as well. So that's why there's a great big microphone in the way of my face. Am I big enough? Is this a good format? I don't know. We only do it once a year, so this is an experiment. Let's get started with the games. So prehistory. It's coming from A Games in Hill 4 F101. They have got prehistory, which is a civilization game that you know I'm not too hot on area control and stuff I've found lately, but I am really intrigued because I am told that this has got some really interesting ways of doing worker placement. I know that's quite a shallow thing to know about a game, but expect that as we go down. The games I haven't played, I'm just kind of interested based on a few things. I'm going to try and find out what I can at Essen, and then you'll know the meat of the things when I do playthroughs and things for the games that I do end up doing that for. This is just, you know, just a flashlight on those things. Flashlight? Torch. Next, Amusement have got Tales of the Northlands, the sagas of Nog and the Nog. I played a prototype of this, and it is a really good, you know, fairly heavyweight although i think there's a family version as well uh euro game where you are going on these sagas you are trying to tell the story of noggin the nog which is an animated series from the uk from the 70s i believe from the people that did things like ivy the engine and bagpuss uh, oliver postgate and peter Furman. i'm more familiar with bagpuss but uh, the sagas of noggin the nog is a great game in its own right and i think does a really good job of translating that i don't want to say ip but i'm going to say ip into a board game and i i saw nick case who is the designer oh his name's right there isn't he you can see all of this uh, i saw him post the kind of the the final version he was showing off oh no it was, it was tony boydell actually just dropping names left right and center unboxing his copy and showing off the amazing little metal coins and noggin figures and things it just looks beautiful so go and check that out all of these things though go and check that out city of rome coming from Ag abacus spiel in hall three e114 you can see all of this can't you i don't know why i'm telling you all of this convention it's just tradition isn't it City of Rome. It's a city building tile lane game from Brett Gilbert and Matthew Dunstan, who are the designers of Elysium, uh, Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time. Many other things that I should be remembering right now, but they are designers that just new games coming out from them. It's on my radar. Raids is apparently a very, very good one from them. It's got fighting between the players in, so I'm not really interested, but check that one out too. Yes, sometimes I have to have cuts to refresh my memory on things and have a drink and stuff. Globe Twister is a game, a programming game where we both start off with, I say both because I usually play two players, we all start off with uh, jumbled up pictures and these action tiles. So move this here, rotate this here. And we need to basically get our pictures to look like the normal pictures again. And whoever does it best or fastest is the winner. I'm intrigued by that. Carpe Diem. Just missed out on the top 10 list. New game from Steffenfeld. It's a really, really nice uh, tile lane game where we're building up these cities and there's a kind of star-shaped board where you have to go to one of the two connected locations to go and get a tile. I'm not doing a great job of explaining that, but a playthrough is coming of that before Essen, so in the next few days, I hope. Chocolate Factory. I played, a, I think it was an early prototype of this at the UK Games Expo, where we are basically taking in the taking off in the footsteps of Willy Wonka and starting our own factories up. It's basically a conveyor belt mechanism where we have chocolate going in to the conveyor belt every round, and then we put these manipulators on there that will, okay, turn the brown chocolate into a blue and a red and do this and double this, and then it comes out the other end and hopefully fulfills goals and things. It could have radically changed from when I played it, and I expect a lot has changed. It's got a lot of different art now, but yeah, anything from Alley Cat is worth checking out. Speaking of, oh yeah, these are all in publisher order, aren't I? I was about to go, oh, that's a coincidence. Alley Cat's next. It's Alley Cat's time. 
Next from Alley Cat, Coral Islands, which I didn't get a chance to play. I saw it at the UK Games Expo, but this again has changed a lot since then. This is a game where we are trying to make shapes out of dice, out of stacking dice up, but it's all one collective board. So what other people do could mess up what you're trying to create inadvertently or on purpose. Again, I haven't played it myself, but looking forward to checking it out. Pocket Farmer, I did a playthrough of the Kickstarter prototype, and this was originally a game called Medical Frontier, and then it got redeveloped by Brett Gilbert, mention him again, who turned it into a fairly different game and one we enjoyed a lot more. We weren't so hot on the original, but this we really, really enjoyed. But go and watch the playthrough to find out more about that. You're kind of making poke, poker hands and trying to uh, research pharmaceutical drugs. Welcome to Dino World. We have played a prototype of this the other day. I don't know why I'm pointing at you. Uh, but, uh, this is a roll and write game where it's it's Jurassic Park the roll and write, basically. You are trying to build up your own dinosaur park with all of these different uh, special buildings that come out every time or special goals that we're trying to reach first and you are drawing little dinosaurs on a piece of paper who doesn't want that uh, i've only played the normal version the simple version there is a danger version that we still need to try but that's coming to kickstarter quite soon that's going to be on demo there troll park all i know is we're building up a theme park that's all i need to know it's on the list Rice Dice from ape games if you saw my playthrough of spirits of the rice paddy quite a while ago now i absolutely love that game so different, so good, you are building up rice paddies and every round water comes in through our fields and it trickles down to the next player and the next player and you might not have any if you're too late in turn order and you need to flood the rice to make it grow and then drain it so you can harvest it. Such a good game. But Rice Dice is Spirits of the Rice Paddy, the dice game. That's, I don't know anything specific about the gameplay, but I am so excited about that just based on that. Another one that just missed out on the top 10. The Stygian Society. Now, I... The only thing I know about this is it's got an Amerigo style cube tower and that simulates combat in a kind of dungeon crawl. But I've since been told that it's not that much of a dungeon crawl. I haven't watched any of the Kickstarter stuff because I just knew that I wasn't going to be able to back it. So I don't want to you know, be pining for things, but very excited about that. And it's got Kevin Wilson as the designer who has a very, very good pedigree of things I should remember. Arkham Horror amongst other things. Santa Maria American Kingdoms, a playthrough just came up for that last week, I think. It's the expansion to Santa Maria, adds all sorts of different modules, a governor you need to move around, ambassador dice that you can take but everyone else gets the use of. Uh, you can play as the Mayan city where you play a fairly different game to everyone else rather than having a grid that you're putting tiles on. You start off with these paths that you put little discs on and your dice has to follow a path rather than just going along a row or a column. And you have a little bit of interaction on the gold track where if you get there first, you get the gold and nobody else can have it because you're the Mayans and you've protected it. Or you, if you get there last, the other players take the gold from you. Again, I did an overview video for that. I did a playthrough for the original Santa Maria. Fantastic game. Check that out. A Thief's Fortune. I did a Kickstarter preview for this. This is a kind of combo-tastic uh, card drafting game where we are playing as different versions of the future in the life of a thief. And we are trying to give him the best future, of course, and try and help him escape all of the danger that he can. Playthrough is there for that. I thought that was a really great one. Fields of Green Grand Fair from Artepia is the expansion to Fields of Green. I did a playthrough for the original game. I know nothing about what is in the expansion, but... I love Among the Stars. We loved Fields of Green as well. And so more of it can only be a great thing, right? I think the only downside to how much stuff we've got for Among the Stars is that it ended up increasing the setup time. But I don't think that will happen with Fields of Green. Uh, Kitchen Rush, Piece of Cake. Kitchen Rush was, was my number two of last year. Very high up in my top 10 of last year. A real-time... A uh, cooking game. We are all working in a restaurant's kitchen and frantically our workers are sand timers and we are just desperately trying to get the orders out as fast as we can. I know the expansion adds desserts, but that's all I need to know because, yeah, the game was incredible and I just want more of it. Pulp Detective. I know it's uh, it's a dice game. It's got really nice Pulp Fiction theme. That Pulp Fiction, not that Pulp Fiction. It's designed by Todd Sanders, and I really enjoyed his Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden from earlier in the year when I did the video for that. And it's published by AV Studio Games, Alban Viard Studio Games, who designed Town Center and Small City and Tramways and all of those great games. I haven't played Tramways, but I'm told it's great. Uh, speaking of Tramways, the Tramways Engineers book 
is a kind of puzzle game that comes from tramways that is this great big booklet full of these puzzles to solve and yeah that sounds right up my alley and i couldn't be more excited about that and i want to ask alban if anybody knows i heard rumblings about a clinic reprint tell me more because clinic is amazing Tybor de Baumeister im Aftrag des Konigs. I don't know why I tried to do an accent. I don't even know if the things that I'm saying are vaguely right. That's coming from the uh, Spiel Museum. Yeah, we'll say the easier words, like the original game was last year. I only played the original game once, and I am sorry to say I don't even remember it. I remember it being good. It was uh, designed by Alexander Pfister and Dennis Rappel. The expansion is just designed by Dennis Rappel, but I am sure it will be very intriguing. Athens. There should be an overview of this going up very, very soon. This is a tableau building push your luck game where we are trying to build up uh, kind of little, not cities, but little parts of Athens with uh, with various structures and fields and things to give you access to different actions as you progress. I explained it in an overview video. Why am I just trying to do it off the top of my head? Because that's what this video is. A lot of rambling in this. Crisis at Steamfall from Beautiful Disaster Games. Tom Stasiak, designer of Assault on Doomrock, uh, did this game that is a competitive game, and you can also play it as a cooperative game. I did a playthrough of the prototype in its cooperative form, where we are trying to protect Steamfall from all these mechs that have gone awry. Fortune City from Big Fun Games. I know it's a city building game. I know it looks amazing. And I know that I am always intrigued by a lot of the games that come from Taiwan board game design anyway. But big fun games have done very interesting things in the past, not least uh, the Perfumer, which is pretty standout as uh, standout things go. <laughs> I had more to say. I, I promise it just went away. But yeah, city building game looks beautiful from big fun games. Nemeton, playthrough of that coming up very soon. Uh, we are druids that are trying to save the dying forest. We are laying tiles that have the moon on them and say it's a blue tile, that's, that represents the river, and you put your blue river moon tile down and trace a line, and it puts resources on all of the tiles up to the first river tile, and it does that in all directions. So you're putting out these new resources, trying to collect them, and you're trying to go to shrines to get the favor of the animals, and you're trying to brew potions, all in an effort to try and save the forest. It's, uh, yeah, playthroughs coming up soon, you'll see. Welcome to, I've gone on and on and on and on about it, amazing roll and write game. You are building up a little neighborhood. You are building up the three streets in it and the parks and the swimming pools and all sorts of things. I did a playthrough for that that you can play along to, kind of. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. One of the best roll and writes around. But also, even more intriguing, welcome to Mini and welcome to Scoring Pad and Goodies. Anything welcome to, I am there. This is very exciting news for me. Once Upon a Castle from Blue Orange Games. I know that it's a roll and write game. It's a drawing game anyway. I'm interested. I am actually going to meet with Blue Orange Games and they're going to tell me more about these games. I've just picked out a couple that I'm interested in. And uh, Scr Scarabia, I should figure out how to pronounce things first, shouldn't I? Is, yeah, I was interested. It's a puzzle game and it's got Br Bruno Cathala on there. So yeah, I'm intrigued. Board and Dice, I am most intrigued by, most excited, by Escape Tales The Awakening. I talked about this in my UK Games Expo preview video, where we played through quite a chunk of the prototype of it, and it was a really, really cool, you know, escape room style of game, but done very differently, and not a lot more narrative to this. And A4 Quest is some kind of print and play game that I am very intrigued by. And they, Sierra West is their next big game for next year. And I'll be interested in demoing that uh, Wild Wild West themed game. I wish it was Wild Wild West themed. Next up, Scientia from Boredom Factory in Hall 2, C112. I know that it's a set collection game. It's DNA themed. Probably tell that from the cover, can't you? Vincent Dutre's art. That's all I know about it. I'm going to find out more. Ragusa. I know that it's got some big twist on worker placement, which I feel like I've already said here. I mentioned that I haven't had time to do the amount of research I would normally do. Ragusa looks really cool, though, and it's uh, from Brain Crack, Crack Games. Expansity from Breaking Games is a city building game where we are building little plastic towers. Uh, I did Manhattan earlier in the year. This looks like it's got more going on with it, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, Pipeline, it's on here because it's from Capstone Games. They have uh, done the new edition of Lignum, and they are reprinting the... 
called Haspelknecht and the Roar, the, the Coal Trilogy. They are reprinting that, and this is an original game from them that's going to be on Kickstarter, that's going to be on demo at uh, Essence Beal. I forgot what it was called then. Fertility, I did a playthrough for the other day, I think it was. It's a tile-laying domino kind of game in ancient Egypt where you are trying to get alabaster and put alabaster in places. Founders of Gloomhaven did a playthrough for the Kickstarter prototype of that, and it's a fantastic uh, kind of collaborative but competitive game where you are all trying to build various parts of Gloomhaven, but you each control resources. And so if, uh, if I own stone and you own something that uses stone, then I'm going to get a bit of a taste of the points that you're getting too. Gloomhaven Forgotten Circles. I've gone on and on and on about how much I love Gloomhaven. It is our favorite game really we have spent so much time in there with our various characters and forgotten circles introduces a brand new one and some special scenarios well not special scenarios but more scenarios that come from the story of the new character as well chronicles of crime noir and what's the there's another one that is missing from the list now uh, there are oh this is coming under a different publisher's name for some reason i don't know why the list done that it's supposed to be from lucky duck games isn't it but Korax Games are doing the German version, I assume. Uh, Noir is an expansion for Chronicles of Crime. You can see my top 10 list or my original video for Chronicles of Crime. It's a detective game using an app. And I am really excited by the Noir theme, possibly even more than the London Bobby-based theme. Smartphone Inc. looks like a cool economic game. I don't know if it's... It seems like it might be a little bit dry, but that is purely based off just reading the just reading the rules and things. I'm hoping to see it in action in Essen and see what it's like because, yeah, I like the theme and you are kind of overlaying smartphone screens on top of each other to select your actions. I like that. Barrage is a, on the heavier side, uh, an economic game from Simone Luciani, who is involved in tons of games that I like that I wish I could think of right now. Grand Austria Hotel, Lorenzo Il Magnifico, uh, Newton. Well, Newton's coming up in a second. I saw on the screen there. If I looked at the screen that I is in front of me, then I would know more things like this. It's coming from Cranio Creations as well, who do Lorenzo and Newton and many, many, many good things. It's on Kickstarter now, I think. Uh, I'm hoping to check that out there. Newton just looks like uh, a nice medium Euro game. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I know about it. I'm based based off things like Lorenzo from Cranio. Yeah, I'm, I'm just there with whatever they're coming out with and anything from Simone Luciani. I've heard good things from the Gaming Rules, the, the Handycon video, where people talked about playing that. It looks a bit beige, but, you know, I'm, I'm deeper than that. Although these are pretty shallow observations of games, aren't they? Factory, funner, and bigger from... Oh dear, pronunciation strikes again. Kuali? Kuali? Hall 1, G125. Factory, funner, I have played before, I think, or factory fun. Anyway... It's, uh, it's a game where you are trying to build all these pipes. There's a real-time race uh, galaxy trucker kind of thing to build all of these pipes and get them connected to basically score points if you can get the right resources to the right plants. And yeah, we played it once at an old game group we used to go to. It was a fantastic game. I really, really enjoyed it and have never gotten around to having a copy. Factory funner and bigger, I assume, expands it even more. And I'm told... That's from the same publisher. Habitat is something I should look out for. I don't think it's on the preview list, but maybe they'll have that there because apparently it's something I've missed out on and that I need to get on. Roll to the top. I did a playthrough for quite recently. Fantastic roll and write game where you are rolling to the top. You, start, you do a pyramid or a tree. Everyone starts at the bottom with small numbers. You need to put a higher number in the next row up. It's a really, really great game, but playthrough for that. Pictomania is one of my, fa my favourites. Uh, party style games one of my probably my favorite drawing game yeah yeah definitely my favorite it's a game where we are all given things to draw and the possibilities are all laid out for everybody to see and at the same time as you trying to draw your drawing well enough that people will guess it you are trying to guess everyone else's drawing at the same time and it's fantastic chaos especially as the cards get harder and harder and the you know, the, the final level of cards is ridiculous. The, the, the words turn into things like it and they and or like really similar things like congressman, senator, you know, they get more and more similar so that it's going to be harder to distinguish. It's just a fantastic game. And this second edition streamlines it, slims it down, 
puts it in a smaller box makes it a lot cheaper, which is a good thing, but I do miss, you know, dry white boards and having lots of different possibilities. This looks like it, make, it makes it a bit easier to guess that there's only a few cards on display, but that's just impressions. I haven't played it. Trap Words. I'm actually getting a copy and hopefully we'll be doing a little something before Essen. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get the group together to be able to play it before Essen now, but... This is a, a game where you are playing in teams and one person on the team is the clue giver. They get given a card with a word on it that's going to be you know, the, the word that you're trying to get everyone on your team to guess. The other team, though, gets to see that word too. They know what the, your team is trying to guess and they write on a pad a list of trap words that they think you are going to say as clues for that word. And so... You don't know what those trap words are and you're trying to avoid them while still trying to get your team to guess the word. Sounds like great fun. Uh, the River, playthrough coming for that soon, before Essen, hopefully. Uh, that's coming from Days of Wonder. It's on the lighter side, a worker placement game where you are building uh, buildings and terrain over the course of a river. It's just a nice little game. Altiplano, The Traveler. Altiplano was fantastic. Uh, a great game from Essen last year, and yeah, can't wait to see what gets added to it. Manitoba, also from DLP. I'll be honest, that's why it's on the list. I'm not sure <laughs> what it is. Uh, Moria, same. It's from the designer of Altiplano and Orleon, Reiner Stockhausen. So definitely interested in that and finding out more about that. Valparaiso is a programming game from Stefan and Louis Miles who designed many things. They designed the expansion for Artiplano, actually, didn't they? Yes. Uh, they designed Rococo with Matthias Kramer. They designed Edo, which was a fantastic programming game from a few years ago. And yeah, that's why it's on here. DLP make great things. Stefan and Louis Miles make great things. And they have a proven track record with programming games as well. So excited about that. Orbital is an abstract, puzzly a uh, city building game where we have all of these triangles that we're trying to slot together into a great big hexagon. Sounds interesting. Uh, Dragon Dawn Productions, they are going to have Dwarf, which is their next game, I think, and they're going to have a demo of that there. Uh, Perdition's Mouth, Abyssal Rift, I did a playthrough for, I don't know when, time all merges into one, doesn't it? This is the expansion for it, though, Soul Spire, and there's going to be... Uh, uh, why am I trying to remember things? It's on the screen in front of me. The hideout expansion. I'm <laughs> trying to just do these things from memory. And I laid it out in a list to make things easier for me. Hey, you don't need to know that. But Perdition's Mouth is a great uh, Rondell-based uh, dungeon crawl game. And I urge you to check out the playthrough on that. Catalyst just looked like a nice... Uh, it's not really steampunk, but that's the only word that comes to mind. Magic-y-based uh, card drafting game that should be on the way from DV Gyochi. Uh, they're in Hall 3, E108, uh, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to do a playthrough before Essen, but I'm interested in it. Deckscape, I did overview videos for the first two Deckscape games. I think I missed one. This is the new one, though. It's uh, another, a, another way of doing the uh, escape room in a box, and it does it with just a deck of cards as well, and it does it very, very well. So I did overviews of those ones. I'll do an overview of this one as well when it arrives. should be in a box with Catalyst. Spring Meadow is Uwe Rosenberg's, it's part of the trilogy with Cottage Garden, Indian Summer, and now Spring Meadow for Tal Ling. And yeah, that's, that's what I know about it. I know that Cottage Garden was far too light for us. Indian Summer was supposed to be the more gamers game, but we found it even lighter than Cottage Garden and with some unnecessary take that in it. Uh, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, will, will I enjoy this one now? We, We've done two, uh, but yeah, something in me still wants to try it. I just want to be laying tiles and things. Uh, Blackout Hong Kong. I know it's the new game from Alexander Fister. That's all I needed to know to put it on the list. Eggetspiel make really nice things. You know, check out the Coimbra playthrough, playthrough when that comes out. It's not on this list either. Coimbra. I'm going to show it to you right now. Coimbra, it's a dice drafting game. Maybe it wasn't on the SM preview list. It's There's a playthrough coming up for that soon. It's a really good one as well. Great Western Trail, Rails to the North, expands Great Western Trail. Overview for that should be coming very, very soon. And yeah, it adds a new board to the top that has this little spider's web of new stations and stops to drop off your cattle and one-off powers and things that is accessed by putting these huts out, which you do from a new auxiliary action. 
really nice expansion. Uh, I don't think I finished talking about Alexander Fister, did I? I don't know much about it. There's a blackout in Hong Kong. There's been a blackout for ages, and now people are scavenging and things are going wrong. It's a competitive game as well. I should remember more about that. There's Go and listen to Alexander Fister on the Gaming Rules Pod Blast. It was a really good interview, but apparently it didn't sink in. I've got a lot of rules floating around my head at the moment. Walking in Burano. Really enjoyed Burano. I know that this isn't anything like the game Burano, but set in the same place. And yeah, it's from Emperor S4 Games. Rambo the board game. I did a Kickstarter preview for that, and it seemed like it was a really nice cooperative game about kind of rather than just leaving everything to the dice to try and make you feel like Rambo and his team. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how the thing is progressing because this is still a demo. But yeah, I want to see how uh, how things have changed since the preview. A Feast for Odin, the Norwegians. I loved Feast for Odin. Was it my favorite in the year that it came out? I think it may well have been. I don't know anything about this, anything about the stuff that's in it. I know it's Uwe Rosenberg. It's more Feast for Odin. It was an incredible, uh, ridiculously huge worker placement board. But you ended up getting all of these little tiles and slotting them together. Tetris style to build up your Viking amazement. <laughs> Sometimes sentences don't quite come, do they? Uh, Fuji is from Furland Spieler as well. And it's from Wolfgang Warsh who designed The Mind and Illusion and Ganshan Clever. You know, off on an amazing uh, run this year, uh, which I think is his first year of publishing games, isn't it? Either way. Uh, this is a roll and write from him, so he's proved that he can make amazing ones with Ganshon Clever, so I'm sure Fuji will be very interesting. Uh, Gloomhaven, uh, the German version, is coming from Furland Spieler as well. Gloomhaven's amazing, just try it. Uh, High Rise, the new game from Gilhover, Formal Ferret Games, who does the networks that we're going to talk about in a second, you can see. Uh, it's a city building game, that's all I know, but all I really needed to know was Gilhover is doing a new game. I'm excited. Uh, the network's executives expands the network, gives everybody individual player powers. I did a Kickstarter preview for it. My copy arrived last week and we haven't gotten around to playing it yet. You should be able to tell that from the number of times I said playthrough is coming soon. Things are getting crazy around here, but I can't wait to play the networks again. Any excuse to play it, it is a fantastic game where you are running a TV station and choosing what shows go on and who stars in them. It's fantastic. Bowers games are going to have Fugitive which is a great two-player kind of deduction game where one person is the, uh, the, the convict that is escaping, the thief that's trying to escape. One person is the agent that's trying to catch them. And they are playing cards that show the numbers where they are. You're drawing cards every turn and playing them face down. And they're the numbers where you are. And the agent is drawing cards too, trying to deduce, you know, okay, well, he can't be in this number, so I can cross that off. And eventually, the, the person... The, Fugitive is trying to escape to the last number. The agent is trying to guess the number that they're at before they reach that. It's a really, really great two-player game. Didn't quite work for us because Rachel hates deduction games. But yeah, I thought it was a great one. Uh, hardback. Paperback was a fantastic uh, word game in a deck builder. Hardback, I know, is kind of a spiritual successor. It's not the same game at all. Things are falling over. I want to try more because paperback was fantastic. Now boarding, we printed off a, a print and play for this because I'm so excited that Tim Fowers makes amazing games, by the way, everyone. Uh, this is a pick up and deliver cooperative game where you are trying to pick up passengers that keep appearing at all these different airports and fly them around, but you are very restricted on the routes that you can take. And so <laughs> in our experience anyway, we weren't very good at it. Uh, passengers just keep building up and you need to try and puzzle out how you're going to get them to where they need to go. Walkstar, uh, I don't have the third edition. I don't know which edition I have. I have an older one. Uh, but it is a real-time cooperative game where, which no boarding is as well. I didn't say the real-time part. Walkstar is a real-time cooperative game where we are trying to run a restaurant and get enough ingredients. The ingredients are all shared. So constantly other people are serving things and your ingredients are disappearing and there's a buzzer that you need to press when you're, you've the real time section is like you've got this long to finish your dish and you press the buzzer when you're finished really really great we haven't played that in ages actually but i would like to know what is new in the third edition and whether i should be replacing my edition frosted games are going to have the advent calendar 
that they have every year. We, ha we haven't had that for a couple of years, but it's a, an amazing idea and definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen it. Promos for 24, 25 games in there. Uh, but they also do the Duchess Beale Prize 2018. I got the 2017 one because it had something for Great Western Trail, something for Feast for Odin, I think. The games that are nominated for this prize, usually my kind of thing. So looking forward to finding out what they are and what promos are going to be in there. Gugong is coming soon to the channel. <laughs> the game is coming soon as well to Essen from Game Brewer. It's a fantastic game where it's set in Gugong in the 1500s, I think, in China, where they had just outlawed bribery to try and put everything on the straight and narrow. And rather than accept that, the officials started doing gift exchange instead, where you would buy them something really, really fancy and they would give you a paper fan in exchange. But it's not bribery because you've got something back. We are playing cards to the board to take various actions and try and get up the palace, really. There's a, there's a palace that we need to progress in to get to the very top of it, or everybody loses. But playthrough is coming for that very soon. Gentes, I did a playthrough for whenever the Kickstarter was on for the TMG version. So this is the new edition TMG and Game Brewer. And that is a fantastic game where you are... It's a civilization game, but done in a bit of a different way where... You're trying to expand out on a map and you have these cards that you want to match symbols that will score more as we go along. I'm just realizing that I don't remember enough about Hentes uh, than I do now, but I did a whole playthrough for it that you can watch. Same goes for Solar City. That was a really nice city building game where you had a grid of tiles and you were trying to put certain tiles next to each other so they would score really well, trying to combo them together like that based on the tiles that had come out in that particular game playthrough is there for that crisis playthrough is sorely overdue it's from geek attitude games that looks like the french version but it's from luda creations i've had this for a while now it's fantastic we played it i really love it it's a worker placement game where you are in a country that is facing a financial crisis and as well as just playing against each other our actions will affect the fate of the the finances of the country so you know, we don't want to uh, bleed it dry too much or everything will go bankrupt and we'll all lose. Really great game. Definitely worth checking out. Endeavor, I did a playthrough for. That's from Grand Gamers Guild. I've seen people on Twitter getting their final versions of this and it looks absolutely beautiful. I did a playthrough for that though. You are trying to, it's a kind of colonial theme where you are trying to discover all of these new continents and make trade go between them, but you can also partake in slavery and it doesn't shy away from, you know, engaging in that and getting big benefits but later on in the game other players can outlaw slavery and then you are out of luck if you went into it too much first class i don't think i ever did a playthrough for it's a fantastic game from a couple of years ago i think from hans im gluck where you are trying to just build up these big train tracks and uh, it's it's a great it's another great combo game where at the start you're doing these very small actions and nothing's really happening and then by the end of the game cards are just triggering left right and center especially for the very very end and it just works together beautifully it comes with all of these different modules that you use a few of every game and this looks like a brand new module there's a little expansion lift off same thing from hans im gluck which who make really great games it's space themed the art looks really nice kind of 50s space that's all i know but it's on the list Hard City, I did an overview video for the other day, I think, from Hexi Studio. It's kind of an 80s throwback, all neon action movie thing where one team is the police trying to fight against the other side. That is Dr. Zero, who is trying to deploy his mutants out all over the world. Sunflower Valley, train-based roll and write game. That's all I know. That's all I needed to know. It's from Hobby World. Really excited about that. Dominations, Road to Civilization from Holy Grail Games is a civilization building domino laying kind of game uh, maybe that doesn't do a good job of explaining it but it was a really great civilization game with no player attacking it was really good for that as well i did a kickstarter preview for it and you can play the demo in essen dice fishing did a playthrough for that really fast filler uh you know bidding with dice you're bidding how many dice you're going to roll whoever bids the fewest is the person that gets to the roll their dice if you roll according to the criteria on the fish card you catch the fish you go for 10 cards whoever has the most points on their fish wins oh dear pronunciation is really going to let me down now sengal sengol gang damai this is from hop Impa games and i know that it's a cooperative game where you are presented with various problems that the village is having having and you need to solve them i know that's not much of a description but 
I want to find out more from that. That's the point of it being on my list. Some of these things, they're not necessarily going to buy these things. Some of them I just want to try. Railroad Inc., Blazing Red and Deep Blue Edition. I know that they're rolling rights. Horrible games make great stuff. Yep, <laughs> that's, that's it. King's Dilemma is also from Horrible Games. This is a demo that sounds a bit like, I don't know if you've heard of the, the mobile game Reigns, where you are a king that's presented with these problems when you kind of swipe left and right to make decisions. This kind of sounds like that, that it's a deck building game, but we are, it's got a narrative aspect to it where all of these problems are facing the kingdom and we want to influence the king to make our decisions to try and advance our faction the most. Sounds really cool. Looking forward to seeing more of that there. Pandoria from Burned Eisenstein and Jeffrey Alice. It's coming from Iron Games. They designed Order of the Gilded Compass together, I think. But Burned is the designer of Polyphonies, one of my favorite games of all time. And yeah, I'm there for anything that is coming out from him. Okavango is coming from Jumbo Games. I know it's a Kramer and Kiesling game. Shallow again, I know, but yeah, I'm excited just from that. Tour Operator from Keep Exploring Games, a beautiful looking game where you are seemingly doing all sorts of things from what I, I looked at. You are trying to fly people all around. You're trying to get them put up in hotels. Well, I suppose you're, you're the tour operator. You're the, uh, you're the, I can't think of the name for it. You are in charge of their whole holiday. So yeah, you would be doing all of these things, but there's a lot of uh, management going on with keeping all of those things afloat and other players getting in the way, booking the rooms you need. I'm very excited to try that out. Tribes Early Civilizations was a great game from Last Essen. Again, I'm really overdue. Sorry, Paul at Spiral Galaxy. It's, it's coming, I promise, one day. Uh, this is another version that, ch that is kind of... The game has been redone and it's from Cosmos. The art has been redone and the game has been changed somewhat. I don't know exactly how it's been changed, but yeah, I'm interested to find out more. And will this be a Cosmos one that stays in German? Hokkaido is from what i from my impressions it's a spiritual successor or in the same series as honshu which was a fantastic little card game i did a playthrough for that a while ago you can watch that shadows amsterdam is a deduction game so based on what i've said might not work for us but i'm really excited by it because not only does you know not many of them work with two players so i'm interested to see how this one does uh this coming from liberlud and i'm going to try that out to play a two-player game of it to see if it would be one for us. Next, Lookout Games. Always great stuff from Lookout Games, isn't there? Agricola. They had the Artifacts deck last year. This year, they've got the Bubuculus deck to expand the new refined version of Agricola, but I assume it would work with the old one as well. I don't know if they're new cards or anything, but I've got the refined version. They revised version. <laughs> they're new to me. So yeah, I would like that deck. Gingerbread House is new from Phil Walker-Harding, the designer of Baron Park. That's that's stop there. It's a it's a puzzly tile laying game from Phil Walker Harding. Definitely, uh, there's a gingerbread house theme though. Even more brilliant. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it's brilliant yet, but I'm excited by the idea. Isle of Sky Druids. We haven't actually played Isle of Sky Journey, man. Yeah, it's sitting sealed somewhere over there still. Just the nature of things, unfortunately. The ones that I buy for myself, even the ones you've heard, the ones that I get given for review copies, are waiting. So ones that I pay for myself, yeah, they're even further behind on the list. But there's a new expansion, Isle of Sky Druids. Isle of Sky is an amazing game. Alexander Pfister is an amazing designer. This is designed by Andreas Pelican as well. Noosefjord Place Deck, expansion deck for Noosefjord. It was a fantastic game. I did a playthrough for that last year that you can go and check out. More cards for it. That's all I know. And Pipe Mats. Yeah, always try and do that accent. Set, little card game, set collection. It looks like it's got nice birdie art. That's what drew me in. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about the game, but excited based on that. Fruit Ninja Combo Party is from Lucky Duck Games. Uh, we have played this, actually. Uh, I need to do an overview video for it. It's a party game where you are trying to, you're trying to build up sets of cards, but also there is a kind of dexterity element to it where there is the handle of a sword in there, Fruit Ninja themed, that's on the table. And if... You play the same card as someone else. Whoever grabs the sword first gets some extra points. Just nice, nice, nice little uh, party game. Yggdrasil. 
I don't really know that much about it. I know that I need to try it. I've been recommended it many times and it's always been out of print. So looking forward to seeing it come back in print here. Apparently these pictures don't want to load. Cupcake Empire. It's really nice looking. <laughs> Hope you believe me. Uh, that's coming out from Ludo Nova. And yeah, you are. It's a, it's a dice placement game where you are trying to run a cupcake shop. Yep, that's, that pulled me in. Areal is a polyomino tile laying game that looks really pretty. <laughs> you have to take my word for it. And that is coming out. Uh, it's, it's designed by Paolo Soldad and Nuno Bizarro Sentiero, who are the designers of Madeira and Nippon and many, many other heavier games. What's the, the ship one? Yeah, I'll see it in the comments. The ship based one, you know, we're, we're moving ships along. It's in the Panama Canal, is it? Panamax. There we go. Yep. <laughs> we'll just pause the video while I think of the names of things. Cerebria the card game, which I assume isn't going to have the goodie box cover. Uh, it's a card game version of... Yeah, I don't know much about it standing alone, but it's a card game version of Cerebria the Inside World. That is, as far as I know, it's the story of the numbskulls from the Beano. There are things that live inside your brain that are trying to take control of the things that your body does. That's all I really know. I know there's area influence and I might be put off because of that, but I want to find out more because, you know, Mind Clash from their previous games, Tricarian and Anachrony, they make ridiculously beautiful things, insanely high production quality, and the games themselves are both fantastic. I did a preview. I did a playthrough, a solo playthrough. No, it wasn't a solo playthrough, a normal playthrough of Anachrony and one a pr Kickstarter preview video for the Tricarian expansion, actually, that brings us on to the Tricarian expansion Dalgard's Academy that's going to be on demo at Essen as well. Uh, Symphony number no. 9 from Moidius. I love the theme. I want more musically themed games, uh, but I have been told this might be a bit too confrontational for us, but I will see you there, won't I? It can from Morning Games. I know it's a cooperative maze-based game. Last time we played one like that, it was Magic Maze. I assume that you'll be able to speak in this, but yeah, it looks cute. I want to find out more. Faceless. What I remember about the Faceless is that it is a cooperative game that uses magnets, and we are trying to get things to face in certain directions with these magnets. I know that they're not going to have very many copies there at all, but I would like to take a look at what uh, the game is like. Quantum from NSV. They published Quix and Quinto, Two amazing roll and rights. Quinto, one of the best roll and rights. So I don't know if this uh, this is just a series or just a new thing using its name, but Quantum, I can't wait. Reef, playthrough coming up for that soon. It's a game where it's a puzzly game where we are building, you know, the the <laughs> underwater reefs. We you basically have a hand of cards. Top bit of the card puts some pieces down on your board. Bottom points scores a pattern out there. So. The top might put two yellow pieces out and then the bottom might be, oh, every stack that you've got of that's too high and it's got blue on top scores you this many points. Uh, so that kind of affects the cards that you want. You want to put certain tiles out to score the patterns that are in your hand, but all of those cards score patterns as well. So it leads to a nice puzzly game. Uh, X Ganshon Kniflig. It's a roll and write game. Yeah, you <laughs> hear that a lot from me. I see Roll and Write, it goes on here. NSKN time. And these pick, what's, what's going on with the internet? Chronicles of Frost did a Kickstarter preview for that. It was a fantastic game set in the Mistfall universe, but uh, not a cooperative game. And there's an expansion for it as well, All That Burns. I haven't seen it since the prototype, so looking forward to seeing what the final thing is like. Dice Settlers, same. <laughs> did a Kickstarter preview for it. Final version will be out now. It's from David Tutsi and it's a nice, uh, there's, there's not too much fighting between the players, but a tile laying game where you are building up a kind of American West uh, settlement, which, yeah, is, I should have just read off there again. Imperium should be coming up soon. Imperium. Uh, there's a Kickstarter for that just after Essen. Uh, it's a civilization building kind of a race game, kind of a deck building uh, race game. Dual Saw Island, two player version of Dinosaur Island. I still haven't played that though. Is Dino should I will I like Dinosaur Island? Should I play it? Panasaurus Games. Will I like it? Dualsaur Island. It's a two player version though. Two player versions of things. Might end up more confrontational, but I am interested to try because it's how I play things. So good it's here twice. Concordia Venus. Uh yeah, just I think it's a standalone expansion, but it's definitely an expansion. 
in some form or other uh, for Concordia. Maybe it's there. Maybe you can buy it separately, or you can just buy it as an expansion. That's why it's there twice. Logic. Uh, but yeah, I know that it's got a team. You can play it in teams now with this new expansion. I'm not interested in that. I only play two players. But I think there's a big box as well. It comes in a big deep box, which would be great because. Uh, we can't fit our Concordia stuff in one box anymore. Black Angel from Pearl Games is going to be there to demo. And it is from the three designers of Twa, which is one of my favorite games. And it uses the dice mechanism. It's not just a retheming of the game, but it uses a similar dice mechanism. That's all I know. Very excited about that. Selenia from one of the designers of Twa, and it's from Pearl Games. That is why it's on the list, yes. Uh, Adventure Island. Similarly, don't know that much about it. It's from Pegasus Spiel. Usually will be of a good standard from them. And it is a cooperative story storytelling game. I think this was one of the ones that I put on there when there still wasn't any rules on there, which is breaking my rule a little bit. There's Queenbra. It's from Pegasus Spiel on the list, but I described that. It's a good job because there's no picture on the website now. Uh, Crown of Imara. I actually don't know much about this. Uh, it was it was put on my request list. So I thought I'll put it on my Essen list and find out about it there. Mage Knight Ultimate Edition. It's only going to be German there, unfortunately, because of my just English speakingness. But uh, yeah, Mage Knight is a fantastic game that I only ended up selling because by the time we got around to playing it again, I had forgotten the rules. And it's quite an involved game, but an incredible one. And I never played with any of the expansions. And since, you know, I got rid of it quite a while ago, much later, I found out that not only I knew there were expansions for it that were hard to get at the time, but Paul Grogan designed those expansions. And Paul Grogan of Gaming Rules. Everyone knows Paul Grogan, right? So I would love to play the expansions just anyway, but with the added Grogan-ness of them. Detective, a modern crime board game. Did a, did a little teaser playthrough of that. Didn't want to spoil too much. But that is a detective game from Portal Games that takes a much different route to Chronicles of Crime, much more serious, much more involved, more difficult. And it's one big overarching story, five cases in the box, but you can find out more in the playthrough of that. Men at Work, I know that it's a dexterity game from Pretzel Games, which I know you can read on there as well. But yeah, that's, that's all I know and all I need to know. They did a great job with Flick 'em Up. Uh, I played the Dead of Winter version. Looking forward to some stacking here. Meeple Circus was quite good fun. I know that's from a different publisher. That's from Matigo, isn't it? But yeah, I would like to try more dexterity games, even though I have pretty shaky hands. It never works out very well. Uh, Counterfeiters, Quinid Games do great things. This is a lighter game where we are trying to do various nefarious mafia things to try and hoard the most money. Passing through Petra, I know it's from Renegade. Make great things, right? And it's from J. Alex Kevin, who is the designer of Gold West, fantastic renegade game, and Sentient, fantastic renegade game. I did playthroughs. There's definitely a playthrough for Sentient. I don't know about Gold West. I don't think there is. But yeah, excited just based on that. Seven Wonders Armada from Repost Production. Really like Seven Wonders. Even two players. I would rather play it at two players, to be honest with you. Uh, but I think that's the best player count. Not that. Oh, I'm going to push you away at three players. You knew what I meant, didn't you? New expansion. I had a quick flick through, and it seems like it might be adding more conflict into the game. Uh, I know that the there is military in Seven Wonders, but it's just a kind of scoring thing that whoever has the most gets... If I've got more than you, I get points, and you get a negative point for not uh, doing your military enough. But I, this feels like it was adding more to it. Is it? Tell me in the comments. Off the rails. I did a Kickstarter preview for it. It's kind of a... Uh, wacky races in a mine uh, we are trying to race around this mine building tracks uh, and uh, our goblin friends are trying to get the get the most lucrative gems but as we are building all of these rails we are inevitably crashing into each other and stuff but you can see the preview for that roxley are there with their gorgeous uh, reimagining of Brass Lancashire and the new game Brass Birmingham, which, uh, yeah, we played, we had the old version of Brass and I enjoyed that. I'm told that we should really try Birmingham though, that it's even better. So I would like to try that. And where I live in the country is on that Birmingham map. Not in Birmingham. Tag City, it's a roll and write. Yeah, <laughs> again, that's all I need to know, but I am heading there to try that out. Bricks, it's a roll and write. Uh, it's a Tetris and right. You are 
drawing Tetris shapes into a grid. That's all I know. And it's from Wolfgang Warsh. Again, designer of Ganshan Clever, uh, The Mind, Illusion. Definitely going to try that out. Uh, I think this might be only there in German, which would be a shame. Forbidden Sky, the new game in the Forbidden Island, Forbidden Desert, Forbidden Sky series from Matt Leacock. There have been fantastic cooperative games in the past. Island a little bit too light. Really enjoy the shifting sands of desert. And Forbidden Sky, I know it's got a light-up spaceship. I really want to try that. Nap de Ben, also from Schmidt. It's a roll and write. <laughs> That's all you're getting from me. Uh, Adventurer's Kit Expedition from Shepherd Kit. It's a, there should be a playthrough of that by the time you see this, I hope. Hand management game where you are sending groups of explorers out on expeditions, but what is out there to explore might be constantly changing. Uh, Ocean Crisis, just, it's from Shepherd's Kit. They tend to make games for children, so they end up being too light for us, but I am always interested in trying them. They look beautiful, if nothing else, but they are, I really like the idea that kids have these proper board games to try and introduce these elements that we're quite familiar with bit by bit. Paleolithic, there is a playthrough for that that has gone up, uh, and that is a very lightweight game to begin with that you can add more and more modules and expansions on top of trying to uncover artifacts in Taiwan. The Penny Papers Adventures are a series of three roll and write games that all change the mechanics a little bit, but you are kind of a, a an Indiana Jones kind of figure, but not Indiana Jones, Penny Papers. Tale of Merchants is a fantastic deck building game where you are taking on the, you are, you're buying up decks of little animals to help you out. The collection is going to be there on demo. I believe that's on Kickstarter. Uh, it collects one and two. We've got Tale of Merchants one, uh, but never got around to two. Uh, and some more cards and a big box to keep them all in. Sounds great. Dawn of Peacemakers should be coming up very soon. And I am doing a playthrough with some beautiful painted minis that watch it paint it painted for me uh, it's a game where there is a war happening but we are not part of it we are trying to stop it we are kind of separate entities whispering in the ears of these factions getting ready to go to war to try and make them stop we've played six scenarios of it so far i think absolutely loving it it's such a it's such a different uh, take on the war game that we are these outsiders and yeah it's got some not really legacy elements, but it's it's got a campaign uh, booklet and it definitely introduces new surprises, new uh, sealed boxes as you go along. Ganymede seemed like a cool card drafting game and uh, I know that Lucky Duck are picking it up and I've been told that I should take a look at it, but I don't know much about it from that. Galaxies, it's from the designer of Mini Diver City that we played and a playthrough will be coming up at some point soon. Uh, Sphere games are going to be there at Essen. I assume there's no booth written next to this, but go find them. Uh, Everdell from Stalin Games did a playthrough for that. Sylvanian Families, Worker Placement, and Tableau Building. Really, really good. CO2 Second Chance from Stronghold Games, but I'm not sure if that's actually going to be there. Maybe it'll be for demo. Maybe it'll be from the original um, the original publisher that's the Geoxy. I, I can't remember. Why try and pronounce things that aren't written in front of me? Uh, yes. Anyway, Vita Lacerda, amazing game, amazing designer. CO2 is fantastic. I did a playthrough for that quite recently, actually, because it was voted for. Second Chance reimagines it, deluxifies the components a little bit and the artwork and adds a cooperative mode that I can't wait to try. So excited about that and really hope that it makes it there somehow and that I can have one, please. Uh, Promenade, it looked pretty. I like deck building games. The cover looked really nice. It's there for demo. I want to try it more. Oh, this is here twice as well. Alubari, a nice cup of tea. I went on and on about this in my UK Games Expo video for last year, for 2017, where we played a game of it. Absolutely fantastic. A kind of successor to Snowdonia. Not a successor, though. A, a different take on it, using some of the same elements, but to make kind of a faster-paced game and a game where you feel more powerful because you can soup your workers up with tea. You can tea your workers up and they will do additional actions and you're trying to grow tea plantations and things. It's not going to be out just yet, unfortunately. Next year is going to be the release for it, but it's going to be there on demo this Essen. Can't wait to try that. Big Dig from TMG. Roll and write game. <laughs> That's, uh, is it a roll and write game? definitely writing things on a pad and ghost of the moor is from kramer and keesling yeah that's all i need to know thundergriff games moving on rolling ranch is a roll and write game two and plus games forgotten city it looks so beautiful 
This is another one that's uh, all over social media at the moment as well. Yeah, gotta, gotta see what, uh, what the game is about. Legendary Encounters, the X-Files deck building game from Upper Deck. I've played some Legendary games in the past. Marvel, I've got a ton of. So many expansions and things for that. Uh, and we played the Alien one, I believe, of Encounters. But yeah, something that uh, is using the X-Files, I would really, really like to play that theme. Because I like the... I like the encounter system. I like the scenarios that we were set up with. And yeah, I like Alien. But yeah, X-Files would be something really special. Make a community one. That wouldn't work. Codenames. Disney from USAopoly. I would just like to add some Disney and Marvel cards to my uh, Codenames box and just have them all jumbled in. I assume you can do that. I hope you can. And there's Harry Potter Codenames. That's Codenames Duet, the, co the co-op one. But with the Harry Potter theme. I hope that's there. I really want that. Expansion for Nippon. I have never played Nippon, and I feel like that may be a mistake now, and that I should uh, I should give it a go. There is a small expansion for it coming out this essence, so maybe I'll get a chance to do that. Mesozoic looked pretty, and it's from Z-Man Games. There, my knowledge of it ends. Pandemic tenth anniversary edition. It's the tenth anniversary. Pandemic is getting a crazy deluxe in a big uh, first aid kit. Uh, box yeah it looks like it's going to be great main concern though is it won't be compatible with all of my expansion stuff and you know i i wouldn't really want to play pandemic just without any of the stuff anymore i want to have the the lab stuff at least in there so can you use it together i don't really know are you going to do 10th anniversary editions of the lab thing of the expansions do we have to wait till the 10th anniversaries of those who knows it looks it looks amazing anyway i was trying to say pretty and it came out wrong and finally, wow, we got there. Pandemic Fall of Rome. This is another in the series of setting a version of Pandemic in the country where the world championships are being held. And so we had Pandemic Iberia, Pandemic Rising Tide, and now Pandemic Fall of Rome. I'm just there for anything Pandemic. It's an absolutely fantastic game, and I love it. But... Yeah, what's going <laughs> to It's like I had something new to say there. I just know that it's Roman themed. There's some kind of combat involved in it. Is the dice involved in it? It's from Paolo Mori as well. Uh, Paolo Mori and Matt Leacock. Paolo Mori is the designer of Vasco da Gama and Augustus. That is one of Rachel's favorite games. She, we've played that so many more times than so many other games just because I quite like it too. But Rach, it's, uh, it's another level four. So I think we are there with my list. We got there. Sorry if I rushed through this too much. As I said, I've, right after this, I'm filming more playthroughs and things. Uh, so I hope that I have uh, piqued your interest with some games and hopefully I can come back after Essen with some more knowledge of all of this stuff to be able to... Oh, that was a weird judder, wasn't it? I tried to change the... I tried to alt-tab around things and I shouldn't have while I was filming, should I? Anyway, yeah, the top 10 is there. I did a podcast as well with... Uh, Paul Grogan from Gaming Rules and Matt from Creaking Shelves about our top fives. So you, you'll you know mine from the top 10 list. But yeah, you can listen to us chat about all sorts of extra games as well. That's a lot of S and goodness, isn't it? It's a lot of stuff to know, a lot of videos to edit, a lot of playthroughs to come. And yeah, about a week to do it all in. But we'll get there, won't we? If you're at Essen, say hi. I'll see you there, probably. If you're going there, of course. I'm going to go to sleep now. Bye.